We humans have developed a curious construction called ego. To understand what this word really means, it is important to make a distinction. The ego does not refer to the physical organism itself, but it is an abstraction. We can compare it to a social convention such as one hour, an inch or a pound. It is created for discussion and convenience, but it has no concrete reality. So what exactly is this ego? It is our image of ourselves, an imaginary and subjective notion that can vary significantly from person to person. It is as if we built a caricature of ourselves, often influenced by the opinions and perceptions that others have of us. This image, however, is incomplete and does not include all the details about our body, our nervous system, our relationships with the world around us and more. Excessive identification with this image of the ego can lead to an incessant search for an identity, an image acceptable and admirable that we can perform in life. However, this search is misleading, if not supported by deeper questions about the nature of existence and the true self. It is essential to understand that we are more than just this image. There is a more real essence in our core that transcends the mere mental construction of the ego. This essence is like a focal point within us, but it is not limited only to the physical body. It is as if it were the epicenter of consciousness that permeates our whole being and connects to the universe as a whole. Often the sensation of the self is associated with a chronic muscle tension that we develop throughout life. This tension is a response condition to social rules and orders, such as paying attention to or someone in life. We end up using our muscles to try to control our nervous functioning in a useless and even harmful attempt. However, it is possible to transcend the illusion of the ego when we realize that this sensation from me is just a mental construction and not a real and tangible entity. This perception is not a mark of defeat or lack of practice in meditation. It is a revelation that the separate individual, the imaginary self, has no substantial existence. To understand this, we can imagine ourselves as babies again without prior knowledge about the differences between us and the world around us. We simply be aware of everything we feel without labeling or judging. When we do this, we realize that we are connected to the whole universe. And this conscience frees us to live with more clarity, peace, and authenticity. In this way, we can embrace our true essence and get rid of the illusion of the ego, finding a new perspective on our existence and the deepest meaning of life. This self-discovery journey leads us to transcend the limitations of the image. We live in the illusion and appearance of things. There is a reality. We are this reality. When you understand this, you will see that you are nothing. And being nothing, you are everything. That's it. If you really go through all the way and see how you feel the idea of disappearing forever and having all your efforts and achievements transformed into dust, nothing. What is the feeling? What happens to you? This is where we are all going. And for some reason, we think we have to think this is a passing thing. You realize that somehow this is the same as saying that the most real state is empty. But if anyone will argue that the basic reality is emptiness, then where does it all come from? Obviously, of the emptiness. Once again, we are back in the question, how is it behind your eyes? You evoke the light of the universe. You put in existence the whole universe of lights, colors, hardness, and weight, and everything. Well, I was saying, so how can something contaminate you? The whole idea that you are scared and worried, well, that's nothing. It's just a dream. Because in fact, you are nothing. But this is the most amazing nothing of all. So you cheer up. The essence of your mind is intrinsically pure. Pure means clean, empty. If you think of this nothing like merely an empty space and hold on to this idea of up space with nothing and stay around. So you don't understand. Because this way nothing is the same as the emptiness of the space that contains the whole. All of the stars, mountains, and rivers, the good man and the bad man, the animals and the insects, all this is all contained in the void. From this void, everything comes, and the emptiness is you. What else could it be?